Take it to the ambulance. So on Monday, I got the uh, new 2018 Mac Mini delivered. Um, I got an upgraded one, the most notable feature. It's probably something that's overlooked by most people. Um, and did I take the one's cover off? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, yeah, so the one overlooked feature that I got on it was the uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet or upgrade. Um, well, it doesn't sound like it's a worthwhile upgrade for the average person. It really probably isn't. Um, but the reason I got it was to partially future-proof the Mac and to do one thing that I kind of have in my dream sheet of uh, ideal um, network upgrades and implementations at home. Oh, wow. There's something going on there. Um, and that is to actually run a 10 gigabit NAS and network storage. So what that means is basically I would have a network drive that's available to other computers on my network. And obviously outside of, you know, all of the storage that I would have, um, the performance aspect potential is huge in that what I want to be able to do is to have file access read write speeds on par with a SSD based hard drive um, whoops did not need to clutch an upshift at the same time with the Glade character. Um, is to have SSD hard drive speeds available over the network. So that's extremely fast. And why I would want that is to be able to do, you know, video editing, multiple computers accessing files on the NAS. So like I run a media server, you know, for home and for some people to also, you know, stream movies from. So things like that. And then just have that huge amount of database, or not database, but file storage available um, with redundancy. So like I also do my time machine backups for all my other Macs at the same time. Um, and ideally I would get like maybe a second or third Mac Mini also, um, one to do, um, more as a dedicated media server and the other just to kind of be that third computer, fourth computer actually, um, for like video encoding, um, so just kind of the thoughts as far as doing that. Um, definitely overkill in terms of like the average home user. But kind of pretty cool nonetheless. Um, so that's what I'm hoping to be able to do. And I mean, right now, even though my Mac Mini is the only 110 gigabit capable device, um, it does mean I need to do some upgrades for my network. Um, so I just recently ran some 10 gigabit cabling, or not 10 gigabit, well, like Cat6e cabling. I ran not Cat, I don't even know what Cat6e is the thing, but I ran some Cat6 cable. Um, and really the next big thing that I need is a 10 gigabit switch. And most of the switches are like a two port for something within a reasonable price range. And when I say reasonable price range, um, I'm going like, what I would be looking at right now is an eight gigabit two port switch. 
which would mean only one computer would get 10 gigabit Ethernet to the NAS if I had one. So, in looking at some of the options, it looks like there's only like one option that would fit the need and an 8 port to 16, one or two options within the 8 port to 16 port um, range. And those run anywhere from like $1,700 to $1,000 plus managed switches or semi-managed switches. And the bad thing about them is that they are like for a rack. They go into like a rack system um, and are huge. So like that's one thing kind of holding me back outside of the price. But to do what I want, that's really the only route there. Now, granted, if I do this within, like, say, a year or so, maybe there'll be more options uh, in terms of switches so I can get, say, like, a, a smaller switch. Um, that's not a full rack. Uh, but, yeah, I really just don't want a full-size rack. Um, even if it's like a 1U rack, um, because it would literally just go on a table or something and get the stuff thrown on top of it. Uh, so yeah, not an ideal setup. I, I would much rather have, you know, say something the size of a paperback book to as my switch but if i have to go for a full rack then i guess i eventually will when i'm ready to put out that money for the switch um but yeah i mean that and like also getting that ass i want um i'm probably looking at anything from a six bay to an 8 bay Synology NAS um, could also look at QNAP but I don't think that with the QNAP I get all of the features I want um, and, and the Synology products make a great interface and they have great software on them to enable a lot of functionality that doesn't really exist on the QNAP although the QNAPs are a bit faster. Beep. Holy cow, dude. But I mean, the difference in speed isn't significant. I mean, I think it's like only 10 to 50 megabits faster over the uh, Synology, so it's not a big deal. Um, and I guess what I've also seen is that the uh, SMB Samba performance is a little bit faster than the Apple's um, network sharing, file sharing protocol. Um, so there's that, but I still think that either way, it would be pretty interesting and pretty cool to have that performance level available. Um, what the heck are you doing? Okay. Like, never seen anyone turn in there. So right now I'm actually going to the Apple Store see if I can find a uh, at least a gigabit USB-C dongle adapter um, for my Ethernet because right now I have a port switch sitting on my desk um, and I have I can have up to four computers running um, shared between 
dongles and switches and whatever's through uh, the two monitors as well. So yeah, like those four computers is pretty much my MacBook Pro, my old Mac Mini, and my new Mac Mini and my work laptop. Um, my work laptop is one of the big things that I definitely do need to always have the availability to use dual monitors and at a minimum one. While um, my Mac, the new Mac Mini, as it is, you know, intentioned as a combination of the server and a workstation desktop. Oof. Um, it needs one monitor, but can also split to use the second monitor. Um, the setup works pretty well. It's a little kind of eluded at times um, when things decide to auto switch based on when I plug something in and whatever but pretty great outside of that I also need to go grocery shopping for not Thanksgiving per se, but just in general. Um, so I will have to find whatever I need a parking spot here. So, you know, I need to go grocery shopping. Alright, that's it for now. I'm gonna run in, find what I can find, and get all of that done. If I could find a zipper. Alright, later, guys. Would you like to figure out what the hell you're doing? Two-glazed stereotype, open your eyes when you drive. And you can see it's not like it's a raccoon. I'm trying to get used to, um, where the phone out now. Because the GoPro actually blocks it when it just, like, looks straight down. I, I can't see it normally. It's like, uh a little to the right. So where am I going? Lunch. Um, burger and fries. I went to this place called Cheeseburger Cheeseburger yesterday. Um, wasn't super impressed with the burger. I mean, it was a good burger, but nothing like special um thought the fries were better and the onion ring the onion rings they had uh, had cornmeal in them so i thought that it was a little bit different and they were like super hot like fresh out of the fryer um but they were really good um So I will have to, um, yeah, I think we're gonna have it. That's where I'm going. And then I need to go to Wegmans and get groceries.
probably just gonna get cheese. No, I need cheese. Cheese and meat. Maybe some vegetables. Yeah, I don't know how to turn. <clears throat> yeah, so the Mac Mini. Um, I gotta mention yesterday that the part of the rendering performance for doing like the live previews and stuff isn't supposed to be all that great. I really didn't notice any, um, really like nagging uh, performance issues that stood, um, that stood out. Um, I mean, maybe it makes more sense if you're doing a lot more super intensive uh, edits. Um, for like color fractions and like 3D effects or something, but I don't typically do those, so I didn't notice anything. Um, I did notice like a little bit of chunkiness in terms of uh, like live previewing, but it wasn't like that bad. And like I was in the background still trying to render. Um, proxy media and optimized media, which I don't think is really necessary anyways, because I'm not doing it on like over a network, really. Um, and I think in that kind of circumstance it would make sense. Um, but I'm not, so like I was just doing it locally on hard drive. Um, so it's not like I had a huge amount of data being transferred across. Um, a network or something uh, that would really have benefited against uh, having uh, proxy media and using it. And I mean, I was run I, I recorded like 2.7k out the grid pile. Um, and even I don't think like the way that I work, a 4k video file would have made a difference either. So I mean, overall. Like basic video editing and like putting in titles and things like that. You don't really need a GPU, any GPU. Um, and it's just fine. So, a 2018 Mac Mini, if you upgraded 32 gigs of RAM, um, it's perfectly capable. And there's no reason to really go out and drop like the extra 600 bucks for an eGPU 